When seeking out subject matter to enhance your drawing skills or just looking for something to draw inspiration from, nature often provides us with a lot of visual inspiration and that is because there are so many different creatures and animals to choose from that can easily be utilized as visual inspiration but also can be utilized in many different artworks as a visual addition. And one creature in particular that we will be learning how to draw today is a fox. Now foxes are really beautiful and are easily associated with genres of nature but also extend into genres of mysticism and can be used in so many different ways as well as provide you with the interesting drawing challenge of representing very unique structures like fur and how to capture concepts of light and shadow in this particular unique creature. So with that being said, hey guys my name is Matt, welcome to another video by artincontext.org where we explore various art related topics and in today's tutorial we will be breaking down the process of how to draw a fox. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now we'll be working with some very simple materials for this particular drawing exercise so maybe we'll working with something like pencils, ballpoint pen, any sort of just basic um, drawing medium is okay. But the way in which we're going to start is we're going to start by drawing the basic shape of the fox. Now we want to start by drawing the basic shapes of the fox. This is where we start to establish the main fundamental features of the fox. So we want to start lightly drawing the triangular narrow type of head. So foxes do have this very narrow type of shape to their snout and head. So our intention is to just keep things very um, basic at this point. So to keep it simple, let's draw a fox from a side view and we can start to draw the legs and the body of the fox as well. We don't necessarily need to worry about drawing any realistic features at this point. Um, so you just want to work on the basic pose of the fox drawing where it is basically seated on its two front legs in an upright position and the hind legs kind of resting. We can also draw in the large tail resting on the floor next to the fox and this is where we can play around with how we actually like the fox to be posed. In this case we're drawing the fox seated. However you can look at some visual references um, on the internet to also assist you in your drawing process and this way you get a better understanding of the physiology of the fox. Now we can also start to place features in the face so we do want to spend some time on the face just generally uh, sketching out the features allowing us to get a sense of positioning and structure. We also want to work with some simple shapes to help us understand how the features work together so we can add the diamond eye shape near the center of the face as well as the elongated snout. So again if you're drawing the fox kind of from a side angle some features will be slightly less uh, visible um, so we do want to uh, start to think about the actual composition and how naturally that causes a very particular shape in terms of the viewpoint from which we are viewing the fox. So we can also start to uh, just take our time in terms of establishing those features. Um, but when it comes to the eye, the eye does tend to have this very uh, diamond like shape. We can also start to add a little bit more of a disheveled outline to the fox drawing. And this way we start to form the fur coat around the fox. So it is a good idea to kind of add these scattered fur like outlines uh, in these zigzag motions with your pencil and again just trying to keep it light at this point but it is good to kind of add these particular scattered fur like outlines uh, just to kind of emphasize the general shape. Now again we're just trying to keep it light at this point and once we have done that we can kind of proceed by lightly erasing the fox drawing. So this is kind of a weird step but the idea is that we will work with the ghost lines that remain to kind of refine the drawing a little bit more effectively. So as we lightly erase the drawing we are creating a very light outline that is going to assist us in the refined of the drawing with a little bit more detail and defined mark making. Now once we have done that we can actually start to refine the fox drawing and at this point we can start to work on details. A good idea would be to start with the head of the fox as this does require a lot of um, finer details so the idea is that we're going to start by just working through the eyes of the fox uh, which have this very unique diamond shape. Again you can look at some references on the internet to kind of assist you in your drawing process but we'll see that because the eyes have these darkened edges around them it creates this very emphatic uh, diamond type of shape it really emphasizes the diamond shape of the actual eye but as we continue working with the light pencil we can start to strategically add some line work to define the pattern of the fur coat now foxes have various tonal values depending on what type of fox we're drawing in this case we can draw inspiration from an orange fox um, and we'll find that various tonal values in the fur surrounding their face uh, we want to basically utilize line work to define this pattern in the face now we can also start to draw in the nose and whiskers making sure we shape the 
the snouts as accurately as possible. But we'll find that by using line work, we not only are defining the actual details, but the line work in itself can be utilized as a way to also emphasize the textural qualities of the fur within the fox. So the idea is that we just want to make sure that as we continue with this process, we take our time with refining different features of the fox. We can also start to work on the legs of the fox. So shifting our way down to the body, we'll find that foxes have narrow legs with four digits. So we want to make sure we think about the anatomy as we refine the features. And moving our way down, we just want to make sure that we are defining all features that are visible, again, especially from the perspective from which we are uh, drawing the fox. So naturally, if we're drawing the fox from a side view, not all features will be visible. But in the case of the actual paws, we just want to make sure we are representing them as accurately as possible. Now, when a fox is in a seated position, another important thing to note is it rests on its hind legs and this causes the hind paws to kind of shift into a horizontal position. So we'll find that at this point, we'll also cause the hind legs to arc because of that seated position, allowing for the fox to rest on its tail. So it's almost seated on the hind legs and its tail. So we do want to kind of uh, capture that quality. And we'll find that this also causes the hind legs to arc once again, allowing for the fox to rest on its tail. So the tail is quite large and triangular. That's another important thing to note, wrapping around the hind legs and curling towards the front of the fox. Now, once you understand the general physiology, you can play around with how you pose your fox drawing. However, there are some obviously fundamental things to make note of. And that is if the fox is in a seated position, we'll find that the, the hind legs create this arcing shape and then shift downwards to the actual feet that rest in a horizontal position on the ground. Now, as the fox rests in that seated position, we also want to make sure that we define the bending motion in the leg, once again, giving a more accurate depiction of a seated position. And we also want to make sure that as we draw the tail, it comes to a point like a spearheaded leaf shape. Now, take your time kind of working through these features, again, kind of refining them, taking your time in terms of working through the face, working your way down to the paws, really trying to capture the, the actual um, structure and uh, scale of these different features and how they are placed together. And once we have completed that, we can move into adding in some light shading. So we should have a basic fox drawing at this point where our fox main features are defined from here and we want to start working on some light shading at this point. So this is where we define the tonal variations within the fur. Now we're not necessarily working with color in this particular tutorial, this is just a very general tutorial on how to draw fox focusing more on representing qualities of shadow and light through just uh, some basic tools like pencil maybe pen to kind of enhance these features but the idea is that we really want to represent the various tonal values through the shading process and this is where we start to really work our way with uh, some light shading with our pencils so we should have a basic fox drawing at this point where our fox's main features are defined and from here what we want to do is we want to start working on some light shading and this is where we define the tonal variations within the fur a good suggestion would be to look at a reference image of a fox and use it in tandem with your line work to guide you in your shading process however the idea is we want to make sure we leave negative spaces near the chest area of the fox and we'll notice that especially in this case because we're drawing inspiration from an orange fox we find that there are these moments of white fur and orange fur or darker uh, hues of brown fur and what we want to do is we want to make sure that how we represent that in our drawing in our black and white drawing is we kind of darken those areas Areas where the darker fur would be and naturally work strategically with negative spaces where the lighter fur would be. So take your time working through the entire fox drawing, slowly adding in some light shading into the areas where there will be moments of dark fur. We also want to build up layers of shading um, at this point. So we want to add light shading to draw to the drawing and then slowly we will kind of enhance them with darker shading to enhance the tonal values as need be. Uh, which we kind of really want to make sure we take our time on again make sure you use a reference image but otherwise make sure you spend some time on the head we'll find that that pattern is very specific um, in terms of how it uh, runs through the head of the fox so where the fox has more variation of tonal value within the fur is definitely in the head and we just want to make sure we are representing those uh, variations with some light shading indicating where we would uh, later on darken the, the fur around the eyes um, as well as the dark tips on the ears. Um, we also want to be strategic with how we use negative space to establish the white areas in the fur once again. So foxes have a white underbelly coat that extends from the bottom of the snout to the chest area. So do make sure you bear this in mind as you proceed with your light shading process. Now take your time establishing these light tonal values. Again, the intention with shading is to always build up from lighter tonal values to darker tonal values. And this way you also have a lot more 
uh, control over your mark making process. But as we continue, we can proceed to add in some line work to define the fur. So now that we have a drawing of a fox with different areas shaded in, we can now work with our pencils to establish line work within the fox drawing. The shading is going to function as a base layer of tone, which we will then add line work over to provide more texture and fur like qualities. And the intention is to add little strokes of lines throughout the entire body of the fox illustration. So we can work on different features uh, one at a time once again because the shading process has already been established the color variation in the fur or the tonal variation in the fur has been established we are now simply adding texture and a more furry aesthetic to our fox drawing so as we add in line work to the different features we can also start to darken the legs and this is also a unique feature of the classic red fox another thing to consider is that as you add line work you also want to add lines that flow in the same general direction maintaining uniformity or kind of this fluid motion in terms of how the fur is placed on the body but another thing we can note is that we can also allow for the line work to be scattered and sporadic but for the most part we want to make sure the lines flow in the same general direction so try to think of fur as an actual coat that wraps around the body of the fox as you add line work now this process does take time so it is important to be patient um, but the fur in the chest as we continue the fur in the chest area of the fox will also be drawn as little vertical strokes of lines again noting the actual structure and position of the body um, and these lines will move across the chest into the back area of the fox where the lines start to flow along the side in a diagonal direction so really thinking about the shifting of the fur and how it changes according to the shape of the structure especially in terms of the pose of the fox droid so because the fox is in the seated position we'll find that the uh, fur or the lines that we integrate will flow in that kind of direction um, or along the direction of the body in terms of that specific positioning so really consider the body positioning and how this changes the flow of the lines in the fur um, but it is important to come back to the head once again spend some time on the facial features it is really essential to take your time working around that uh, diamond eye shape making sure you really create that darkened uh, fox eye um, kind of uh, dark outline around the eye we also want to consider how the fur moves along the forehead and up the ears and around the eyes so the fur flows in a more dynamic way around the facial features and this is because there's a lot of uh, bone structure that kind of shifts in different directions again the bone structure and the body position um, is always going to be indicative in terms of how the fur actually flows around the body and that's something to just think about when you integrate your line work now we can also make sure that we darken the eyes once again a little more to establish that very distinct fox eye aesthetic within our fox sketch um, again this is a very uh, important feature and you can also leave a little negative space to emphasize the quality of a highlight in the eye um, but otherwise guys make sure you keep the line work uh, more subtle in the chest area of the fox drawing allowing the lines to curve inward towards the snout of the fox we don't need to add too many lines in the negative spaces once again making sure we don't necessarily take away from the white features in the fur but otherwise guys that is the general process of how to draw a fox in a few simple steps now this is a very simple way in approaching a fox drawing or an animal drawing however a lot of these uh, concepts can be applied to other animals that share very similar features uh, especially like cats and dogs or anything that kind of has the like long snout or fur or kind of shares a similar physiology in terms of larger hind legs but the idea is to really just take your time on working through these uh, concepts of layering starting with a general sketch building up the the general tonal values and then working some detailed line work over that to really emphasize and enhance the drawing but otherwise guys that is it some key things to think about is establish the shape of the fox lightly erase the drawing for guidelines then you can work on the facial features that is the most important part i would suggest you take your time with the facial features because that's where a lot of uh, fine details are really essential um, to capture as best you can and then lastly use line work and shading together line work is a great way to represent the quality of fur and to be utilized as a, a tool for shading um, but otherwise guys that is it for today um, if you did like this video please let us know in the comment section below if you are interested in similar or related topics you can also show your support by liking and subscribing that helps us to grow the channel which ultimately enables us to make more art related content for you guys but thank you again for tuning in that is it from me today until next time cheers